In this video, I'm going to walk you through a CFA level one exam style question on the discount margin or the required margin on a floating rate security. A technical computation, which is at the end of the day quite easy, but many people fail to grasp the logic behind it. Hence, if you want to get this right in the exam, do keep watching and let's get solving. So this is the question which I want us to have a go at. A three year floating rate note pays interest at three month. URI board, that's going to be our benchmark or reference rate, plus 0.8%. The instrument is priced at 97 per 100 of par value. Three month URI board is currently 1.5%. Assuming a 30 by 360 day count convention and evenly spaced interest periods, the discount margin for the note is closest to, and we've got three options measured in basis points. Right, so. Let me write down some uh, basic stuff here. The um, floating rate security here pays coupon, obviously in accordance with 3M Euribor, plus, um, we're told, 0.8%. And this 0.8% is the quoted margin, which is obviously set up when the instrument is initially created, when it is issued, and this is our reference rate. Now, unfortunately, what you'll see quite a lot is that the quoted margin is not necessarily the margin that is currently required by market participants. So this is not equal to the margin required by, um, you know, by investors, by the market. And the reason we know, or the, the way in which we know that this is that this is not equal, is because this instrument is priced at just ninety-seven per one hundred of par value. If this quoted margin were indeed equal to what's required by investors, um, the uh, security would be priced at close to or equal to one hundred. It's not. So uh, because the instrument is uh, priced below par value. We know that this relationship holds. And what this question asks us for is to compute the discount margin. And the discount margin is basically the margin currently required by investors. And we can mathematically do this. We just need to, you know, use the time value of money worksheet in order to do the computation. So, first of all, let's compute the current interest payment or coupon payment. Well, um, given the relationship with, which we've got up here, three month uh, Euribor plus uh, zero point eight percent. What is current three month Euribor? Uh, yeah, it, we're told it's one point five percent. So one point five percent plus zero point eight percent. But because these are um, quarterly payments, I guess right. Um, a three year floating rate note pays uh, interest at three month Euribor, and um, it's going to basically provide quarterly payments if it's based on three month uh, Euribor. Um, we divide this by four to get the uh, actual figure. So um, let's take the calculator out. So we've got 1.5% plus 0 0.8. So that's 2.3. We divide that by four um, to get a quarterly payment of 0 0.575. Uh, percent in the exam, even if you're not given the frequency of payments, if something is based on, you know, a three month uh, reference rate, uh, assume that it's going to be quarterly frequency of payments, so four times a year, and you have to <laughs> proceed as um, as here. So this is uh, on a per quarter basis. Now I'm going to use this number for um for the purposes of doing some computations on the time value of money worksheet on the calculator so basically i'm going to set up the following figures for n i'm going to have so the number of periods it was a three year note um with a uh, quarterly frequency of payments so three times for that's going to be 12 periods for my TVM computation. Now, the PV, the present value, we were told in the question that uh, the price of the bond is currently, or the note, is 97. So let's make this a negative because we're paying for it. Okay, in terms of the PMT, the payments, I'm going to have whatever we just computed over here, 0 0.575. 
So that was the reason I wanted to get this computation, to have a figure to plug in as my PMT number. Right, so this is a 5. And uh, what else? We need an NFV, and that's obviously going to be um, 100. Okay, and let's see what our calculator will give in terms of um, I over Y. So the yield, that's going to be our unknown, which we'll want to compute. Right, clear the time value of money worksheet first, always, to make sure you don't have anything residual left in it. So 12 for N, then 97 but negative for PV. 0 0.575, that's the uh, payment, isn't it? And 100 for FV, and I'm going to compute I over Y, and my calculator is displaying a result equal to 0 0.8, 0 0.83, well, let's stop at 88. Okay, this is the um, yield currently required by investors on a per quarter basis that's obviously a percentage if we you know want to scale this up to a full year we're going to multiply this one by four let's see what that gives on the calculator so times four um 3.355 um i guess that's enough precision if enough detail 3.355 per year or per annum although you know be careful this is not the answer to the question although we've got an answer which corresponds to this answer a that's not the question yet because we are asked for the margin the discount margin or the margin required by the investors that's the entire yield from this required yield we have to calculate or sorry we have to deduct the current level of Euribor Euribor currently was um, 1.5, so minus 1.5, current level of three-month Euribor, because we're asked for the extra bit on top of Euribor, you know, what that is. So if I deduct 1.5 from the result, which I see on my screen, I'm going to get 1.855 1.855 percent which uh, i guess is absolutely perfectly in line with answer b so what this is telling us is in order for the note the the fixed income instrument to trade at 100 per 100 of par value so in order for it to trade at par the quoted margin would need to be instead of 0 0.8 percent 1.855 or 185.5 basis points the reason the note trades below par is because this quoted margin is too low um in comparison with what investors are expecting but don't fall into the trap trap sorry of thinking that this is the discount margin or required margin no this is the the required yield given the bond parameters right now and its price from this, you deduct the current level of the uh, benchmark or reference rate to get the actual discount margin or required margin.